Welcome to this special preview for the heats of the Group 1 Maturity Classic at the Meadows this Saturday. My name's Jason Adams. I'm joined by Corey Smith from the Meadows. And Smithy, great to have you here, mate. And in terms of big events at the Meadows, it's been none bigger than last week with the Chicken Wing Eating Contest. Keen to hear how that went, but most importantly, we build up to what's an exceptional kind of racing this week. You know what baffles me, Patch, is we, we put in all this effort, we work towards races like the Phoenix, like the Australian Cup, like the Top Gun, and all anyone wants to talk about is $1 wings. That's all we had to do. That is all we had to do to get people. We, uh, we flaked out a little bit. We thought we'd have a little bit of fun on the socials and, uh, and talk it up as if we were doing a staff challenge. We didn't do that, but we're copying that much criticism that we haven't done it, that we might have to kind of uh, maybe have a crack at it. And there's a few people that are nervous, myself included, about it. But uh, I reckon it'll be plenty of fun once we finally do it. And there's already talks about sequels as well. Chicken nuggets, dim sims, plenty of talk about different food challenges. So that's what the people want. And if that's what the people want, we uh, we better come through with the goods. And an event that sounds only fitting for Phoenix Night as well. <laughs> oh, exactly right. Imagine a million dollar race, the world's richest greyhound race, but then we've got an eating challenge amongst the staff as well. I, I think it just makes sense. Speaking of good news stories and way to promote the sport, that is exactly the way to do it. But in all seriousness, the maturity, it's a series that's been won by some of the icons of the sport and, and legends of the past. So you never know what's in front of you with greyhounds of this sort of age and experience, but boy, there's some sharp ones a part of it. Yeah, I think you can easily forget the greats of the past and, and recency bias can kick in when you start thinking about the best greyhounds you've seen. But in the last few weeks, I've going, been going down memory lane. I know you have as well, watching Simon Told Helen, watching Seneki, watching uh, Fernando Bales. The, the, they're absolute freaks for the to be able to watch those greyhounds strut their stuff and and beat some seriously talented greyhounds as well. You, it's not only just the winning on a roll. You have a look at the greyhounds that run second, third, all the way down to eighth. There's Group One winners that have run eight in a maturity. There's Myra D. McCoblens who are Melbourne Cup winners that couldn't even get into a maturity field. They were first reserve in the recent years. So uh, it's a cracking race, a cracking on a roll. Arguably one of the best on a rolls in the sport. And because of the age restriction being the 1st of January 2022. They're just about two and a half generally, isn't it? And we see some who are coming through the ranks who don't have a lot of experience, but some are also at the peak of their powers at the moment and in redlining from a former point of view at least. Yeah, exactly right. We, we've we spoken a fair bit on, on other shows and other, other stations and all that stuff about explicit and he was eligible but unfortunately I think he, uh, he gained a bit of an injury up in Brisbane so he won't be going around but there's plenty of talent with Lakeview Emily who ran second in the Brisbane Cup second in a uh, Flying Amy as well so these greyhounds have been there at the top echelon of the sport and then now they're coming back to age restricted class and they're, they're facing greyhounds that are similar age to them so it just adds a level of intrigue, but the, the quality certainly doesn't lack. It's going to be superb. Eight heats, only the winners get through. So let's carve into it. And how heat one looks, it's clearly headlined by excavation for the Thompson camp, who, as we know, year after year, they're just so strong and, and so dominant. And what we saw from this boy when he went to Brisbane was superb. Yeah, I was speaking with Connections earlier this week and, and they just thought that he thrived on on travelling away. And I know in the past plenty of trainers have suggested that a trip away has done a greyhound plenty of good and maybe that's the case here with the, uh, Excavation. He's uh, an absolute rocket. We've seen that. 29.99 PB at the Meadows. He's had three wins from four starts hit at the track and distance. I think he's got plenty of improvement on that and he's going to be incredibly hard to beat. How do you handle a trip away? As good as what? excavation uh, normally I'm a little bit rusty on the mm. way back patch uh, a trip away normally means a couple of frothies and doesn't really agree with me on the way back couldn't agree more I'm making my debut at the Darwin Cup in a few weeks time so boy if I make it home alive that will be an outstanding result in terms of his dangers for excavation who that Shanlin $5.50 for me I think no way because he's a slow beginner who runs on against a dog like Excavation, which probably means it's a bit of meat on the bone from Excavation's point of view. Yeah, potentially. Uh, but Hudat Shanlin's the sort of greyhound that not generally a punter's pal. It's not a greyhound that I look at and go, it's going to map to perfec perfection. It's going to be hard to Usually beat. Usually gives him grief because he pops up at the wrong e time. Exactly right. That's that's exactly where I was heading with it. So it wouldn't be a surprise to see Hudat Shanlin win this. But the form that it's been in, uh, obviously had a satisfactory trial before this. It was There's a few little queries on Hudat Shanlin, and I think Excavation's a little bit closer to bulletproof than he is. So he's who you're tipping? Excavation for me, yeah. 100% and for me as well. Let's move on to heat number two of the Maturity Classic, and this is wide open as it gets. You don't need the market to explain that. We've got a, almost a whole field at single-figure odds. So tattoos at the top end of that market – 
And the one at the longest odds still in single figures is, is Champagne Cuddle. How do you read this one? Uh, it's a very, very difficult one to try and pull apart here, Patch. I like Holden Bale, been running really good times over the provincials. The 500 metre form at Bendigo breaking 28 seconds is nice. Didn't get it all uh, his own way last start at the Meadows, first crack at the track and distance uh, for a little while. Um, but I reckon there's improvement there. Box number one is going to bring Holden Bale into it. He's going to be hard to beat. But ethanol volume stepping back from, from a kind of distance campaign as well. Pink Diamond Series, uh, McKenna Memorial Series as well. There, there's plenty of intriguing this one. Tattoo's coming back from Queensland. So uh, I think punters are going to have a, a bit of a difficult time trying to figure this one out. What do you, impact do you think ethanol volume is going to have on the race? He's clearly going to be strong, but we know he wants to push that wider part of the track as well, and he'll be doing that from a middle draw. Yeah, exactly right. I, I actually think the draw is not too bad for him. I know box five is never the ideal draw, but he he's just needs a little bit of room. He's He just kind of lopes along and, and looks like he's going – uh, kind of at half speed, but he's not. He, he's absolutely humming along, and he's going to be he's going to be chiming in at the business end if he can kind of get close enough to him. But that's the question mark. Holden Bale, fittingly wearing red and white in the old <laughs> Holden colours. Is he the one you're tipping on top? <laughs> yeah, I'm with Holden Bale. I think the inside draw will suit, and uh, I reckon it's been a nice campaign as well. Head back to Bendigo after some Meadows runs, come back to the Meadows last Saturday night, and while it didn't go to plan, I think it'll work uh, on Saturday night. Holden have been losers in the most recent years and wearing red and white. My blokes for Swanee has been losers over the past couple of weeks as well. So I'm tipping Champagne Cuddle in that heat of the maturity. Just think that raw rally speed is going to count for plenty in such an open race. So obviously he's going to transition it to 500 metres, but I think he will be able to do that. So there's heat two of the maturity. Now moving on to heat number three. In the top end of that market is Blue Camaro from the Red Overflow. Bows are part of this, tipping Hopkins, Vincent Bale. Slick Rambo and Smithy, another race where there's a stack of them here at single figure odds. Yeah, exactly right. It's another race that's really tough. Blue Camaro's come up as favourite and it just loves the track and trip. 29.83 PB, one four from eight and then further four placing. So never missed miss the top three at the Meadows. But uh, I'm with Overflow Bow in this one, Patch. I just think this Greyhound has been racing in really difficult company. He, Craig Chapelo, his trainer, has not been afraid to travel him. He came down for the Silver Chief Series last year. At the end of last year, he was nice and young, still inexperienced. But a trip away to Queensland as well. He's done plenty of uh, high-level le racing. I think he'll be able to handle the pressure and the Meadows should be uh, no problem for him. I was going to ask you, is his lack of experience at the Meadows any consideration for well, you, given he's got plenty well, of class as is? Yeah, I, I, obviously he's got the class. I, I do recall he trialled prior to uh, his Silver, Tra Silver Chief heat loss, where I think he ran fourth on that occasion. So he's been to the track a couple of times. I don't know if he's been back since then. So it's been a little while, six or seven months, but uh, he, he's certainly got the class to overcome it and he his trainer, Craig Chaplow's uh, got no problem in travelling him as well, so he must have the right tem temperament for it. So, Smithy with Overflow Bow, I'm with Vincent Bale. I just think he's arriving at this series at such a good time. He's been good in his past few runs, and though he lacks a bit of early speed with clear room, he can really get going through that first turn. So there's heat three of the maturity. Now moving on to heat number four, and House of Turbo is at the top of this market with sports bet. He shines second in line, ethanol, water, can you hypersonic jet, screen, jet stream icons. So plenty here again at single figure odds. So it doesn't get much easier. No, it doesn't get any easier at all, Patch. This race comes with so many different form lines. You've got the likes of He Shines, who we've seen in Country Cups. You've got the likes of Ethanol Water, who we've seen in, in Group 2 features over the 595, and they're coming together and uh, making this a really intriguing race. House of Turbo, I've got a massive opinion of. A couple starts ago, he beat Alpha Zulu, who we saw go around in a Phoenix and plenty of big races over the last 12 or 18 months. So he's certainly got the talent to beat classy dogs. He steps into a race with plenty of class Classy dogs in it. He shines, comes up with a really what do you nice make draw. Of him? I think he's got a, the perfect draw for him. He, he likes the pink. He likes being drawn off the track. Whether the 500 metres is his go at this stage or not, that is the question mark. But he's certainly got the talent. Would not surprise me at all. But this is a race where there's a huge amount of early speed in my eyes. So I'm happy to go with a, a back marker in, in ethanol water. If, Same if as she me. gets a, a clear run out of a patch, she has got such a big engine and we know how strong she is. We know how strong the whole litter is. Um, but from box number before, I think she might be able to find the rail and run over the top of them. So she stepped really well in her heats at the McKenna and probably the draw let her down in the final. 
Where is she going to settle here? Can she step to the front in a race oh, over this distance? I'd be surprised if she if she stepped to the front. You've got some provincial speedsters that are stepping up to the 500 that might be able to run those low five-second sectionals, which lead 90% of the races at the Meadows, but they're all going to be taking each other on. So that's why I think with, uh, with pressure early, I'd rather be with a dog that might be able to just pick her way through the field. She's got plenty of race experience, 38 starts now. So, um, yeah, I, I think ethanol water, just the race experience, the toughness, the strength, I think that'll shine through yep indeed ethanol water for me as well in heat number four of the maturity classic that's half time and now move on to heat number five and this is where you get a bit itchy here smith you get a bit nervous we'll get to that shortly lakeview emily was terrific in the brisbane cup last week and she's battled to be favorite in this event with kenya all class no secret that you're a part owner <laughs> He's had a few months unsighted. He's now back. How do you yes. feel about him returning? Uh, I'm excited. Uh, obviously, going straight into a Group 1 heat is, is tough company to step up into, and he's never really faced a greyhound of, of the ilk of Lakeview Emily. She's an absolute star. We've seen her go really well up in Queensland. She's gone well at the Meadows. I think it's 29.67 PB. She's gone very fast at Sandown as well. So she's a high-quality greyhound. Uh, my boy Ralph, uh, as he's known at home, Kenya All Class, he's going to have to step up and deal Is with he named that pressure. Ralph, Ralph Wigan? A uh, bit of Wreck-It Ralph sort of operation. Okay. He, he doesn't mind... Uh, being a little bit, to, well, bringing a little bit of mischief to the Hopkins household, which I like. Give her a little bit of curry. Why not? Make her make her earn her keep, I reckon, Jess. But uh, she's certainly done that over the last few months. When he hasn't been racing, he seems like he's in good nick. He, he's been trialling really, really well uh, on upon resumption, but he hasn't had a 500 yet. He's naturally strong, but uh, he's got to overcome Lakeview Emily, who in my eyes should be favourite in the all-in market. I think she's an absolute superstar. And when I saw that she was eligible for the maturity and I knew Ralph was heading that way, I got a little bit nervous because she is a, a proper top liner in my opinion. Is he in that situation, can your class of being better for the run this time around or is it timing it at perfection he's right ready to go for this week well you never know he he hasn't um he hasn't had any trials against other dogs it's a bit hard to get trials against other dogs when you're when you're kind of as fast as he is and, and on the comeback trail as well so there's plenty of question marks jess uh jess is really happy with him he's feeling really good so there's no excuses going into saturday night but he's just got to put it all together in a full field and a full field that's full of quality Speaking of fast dogs in field trials, he wouldn't have been out of place, at least from a time point of view, with that famous satisfactory in the Meadows <laughs> a few years ago. Is that your favourite trial ever? I reckon it's my favourite trial. Who was in it? Uh, it was Silver Lake and Zach's Entity in a, in a uh, satisfactory trial. I reckon they fast went about... Fast dogs, but... Yeah, a little bit iffy. Uh, he's probably putting it politely there, Patch. But uh, I do recall that trial just with... <laughs> I, I couldn't believe it. I, I reckon I was one of two people watching it after the last on a Wednesday day meeting and I just thought... Have a look at these absolute superstars. And then we know, of course, Zach Sanity and Silver Lake both uh, had their issues and probably, well, definitely didn't fulfill their their potential. But they're the sort of trials. I wish we could kind of broadcast that and and make a bit of bit of love about it. But uh, fast animals. It'd be awesome. And before we move on from that, there's a story behind it as well. What about the gentleman that rang up the office at the Meadows <laughs> and said, right, I've got this dog. I need to get into a satisfactory trial. I need it to be cleared. Yeah. And you knocked him back. What happened after uh, that? Yeah, so normally we would never knock anyone back from a satisfactory trial, but I actually don't know who this was. So hopefully they're listening to the podcast, but they rang the Meadows and I answered the phone and he said, I've got a maiden. She's got some ability. Uh, yeah, it was a maiden. I've got she, She's got some ability, but she's been knocked around in her first few starts. She needs to be cleared in a satisfactory trial, but I don't want to put her in a, a trial that has fast dogs in it. Can you let me know? And I go, well, uh, no, we don't normally tell people what dogs are in trials. We normally don't know. But I, I'd been worded up and I just said to said to the bloke, I said, maybe just wait till next week. And then uh, the next day we got a call. Someone else answered it and they just said, tell Corey, uh, thank you very much because he, he avoided the 29.56 or whatever they went, something head absolutely freakish, just a head bobber, one of the uh, one of the great clashes that I've ever seen and it was a satisfactory trial between two absolute enigmas. A man of the people is our man over here, C. Smith. Who's your tip in that heat, sorry? I'm um, with Lakeview, Emily. I, obviously, I, I would love for Kenny All-Class to win and find his way through to a Group 1, but I've just got to go with the, the proven greyhound in this sort of class. Lakeview, Emily, for me as well. Awesome in Brisbane last week. I think she can go one better in her heat of the maturity. Now moving on to heat number six. And again, no dominant favourite. We've got Smooth playing up the top, and there's always risk attached to him given... 
uh, the lack of early speed that he usually does show. And then you've got one like here comes Millie. And the box draw has been really painful for her in Des Douch, hasn't it? It certainly has. Not this one, not but this in the one. past. This one's, uh, this one's not a bad one. She obviously came up with a decent draw in the heat of the Sapphire Crown and, and ran reasonably well. But then she came out in the final from box number six and just hummed straight across to the front and that was all she wrote in the group one so she's clearly got plenty of talent but then when she went up to brisbane she she managed to get all the visitor draws patch and uh just had zero luck and was uh, was belted from pillar to post to be quite honest with you but she comes up here with box number three i think that suits i think there's plenty of talented greyhounds in this smooth plains a very fast animal he was in the brisbane cup final as well but here comes millie I, i've just been waiting for her to draw a good uh, sort of map, and I reckon she gets that here. That she does. What do you make a smooth plane, shrewd sticker? They don't, well, smooth plane a little bit, but they don't have that sort of experience that here come Millie, Millie does at this sort of level. No, they don't, but smooth plane at the same time, raced probably uh, just as many races as anyone in this series has and has been in a group one, has been in plenty of free-for-alls as well. So it'll handle the, pr handle the pressure and it does do a few little things wrong. It's not bomb-proof by any stretch of the imagination. Warm Cockles is probably at the start of its career versus um, some of these. But, yeah, uh, Shrewd Stick is an incredibly fast animal with a great overall record as well. So they've all got a case to be made for them, but I just think at the prices, I think here comes a million should be favourite in this one from the draw. I know she's prob looks like on paper she's not in form, but she's been completely luckless. Yeah, it doesn't have a lot of experience in the Meadows, but personally as well, I don't think that's going to matter. So I think she'll be winning that heat of the maturity as well. That is heat six behind us now into heat seven, which is the penultimate of the series. And now we've got one of the very few clear favourites in the market. It is number one, follow the band from the Cherry. He's been pretty good. He meets Kingsley Bale, has got a fair bit of pace as well. Bumpy Gold, who targeted the Thunderbolt, Thunderbolt. series in, in New South Wales and reiterate, who drops back in distance. Is this race in the palms or follow the bands? Uh, I think it is. There's obviously question marks and, and the map is a really hard one to try and figure out, in my opinion. Bumpy Gold, you just touched on, went for the world's richest short course race up at Graft and that's where it's been racing over the 350 metres. Not a classical form line into a No, maturity, it's not, but uh, Anthony Azapati obviously thinks that Bumpy Gold's capable of doing it because he's put her in and she's come up with a reasonable draw as well. She, I'd be surprised if she wasn't able to lead. If she can lead, maybe follow the band, sits on her back. If follow the band holds her out, then uh, I reckon that's all she wrote. But $2.05 is what they've put up about follow the band. Maybe a touch short for my liking with a race that has so many question marks in it. If Reiterate gets across, we know what it's been able to do over the middle distance. So uh, it's probably one of the tougher races for me to try and bet in um, because I do think it's nice and open, but the clear on top, it has to be follow the band. It's just whether or not you want to take that price. What's your read on Kingsley Bale? Because from his early days, I was a big fan of him. I still think he's fast. Yeah. I think when the pressure's on, he doesn't want to stand up to it. What do you think? Yeah, I think that's probably a fair statement. We've seen that over his last five, six, seven starts where he hasn't got the chockies and he, he's kind of been in positions to win a race and then hasn't been able to go on with it. I know he's been beaten by some quality greyhounds over his last four starts. I think In The Hub's knocked him off three times and we know the, the serious talent that In The Hub is who missed out by the maturity by I think it was a week. Uh, which is unfortunate. It's like Christmas Eve or Christmas Day he was born. So yeah, something like that. Some sort so, of present for Dave Crawford. Yeah, you'd be uh, you'd be a little bit little bit upset that he'd miss a maturity because he would have been right up to this sort of race. But uh, it just goes to show that Kingsley Bale's been in really high high quality races and and maybe you could argue that this is actually a drop in class, which doesn't really make sense given it's a Group One heat. Yeah, indeed. And when he's won, he's won really well. So follow the band is your yeah. top topper. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Likewise for me, good draw, good dog, and hopefully he can convert on those two qualities. Now the eighth and final heat of the maturity, and we're going to see some roaring speed from uh, either side of the track here with Mapunga Shine and, and Bernie Burrow. They're the two standouts from a market point of view. Which way will you be leaning from those two? Well, it's so difficult because we spoke about Kenya All Class before coming in off a break, and Mapunga Shine's the same. He's looking to become, I think, the only third greyhound to ever win the Silver Chief Maturity Double, the uh, the two age-restricted races there at the Meadows, and uh, I think he's got an opportunity to. He comes up with box number one, which he's won from before. He's a very fast animal, but first up, I know Jeff Britton, Angela Langton is one of the best training camps uh, that there is. He's going to have his work cut out for him. Like you said, Bernie Burrow has a fair bit of uh, 
fair bit of early speed. Lorraine Jackie, uh, trained for, by by Jack Smith, has run some really fast times up at Wentworth Park. You don't know what she's going to do. So there's there's question marks on Mapunga Shine, but I know you and I are both massive fans of him and and think he's a proper top liner. He just needs to stay out on the park and uh, and get that race experience in. Yeah, indeed. He's got to put it all together. I mean, coming in fresh, I think, for this stage of his career is going to be a good thing. And Clearly has already shown some exceptional form at the Beddows back on Phoenix night when he did win the Silver Chief. Bernie Burrows won three in a row. I think the best of them was the first one. Yep. He let it stand out from the pink. He went 1869 to the back. That is roaring. If you don't know uh, how good that is, if you break 1880, you're into group class. So do you think you can step in exactly the same way as he has in his past three? Well, I reckon the Thompson camp are, uh, are hoping that's going to be the case. He went 5.03 on that occasion as well. So absolutely flying along. If he goes 5.03 here, there, I don't think there's going to be anything that can lead him. Aston Nero does have a, l- a little bit of early speed as well. But uh, if Bernie Burrow can carve across, then it's going to be really hard to beat. Mapunga Shine's going to have to be on his uh, best form, which we know first up can always be hard to kind of capture but he's the best dog in the race, Mapunga Shine. I've got no doubt about that. But Bernie Burrow is the dog that's in form. He's got the race repetition and uh, and he has the early speed too. So plenty of question marks, but I'm happy to go with the class runner in Mapunga Shine in this one, Patrick. Bernie Burrow for me. Stepping beautifully. Love that win at Sandown. I think he can do the same thing here. Set fast numbers to the back, although he's not a rocket overall, yeah. as we know in most races, if you're running those sort of numbers to the back. You're in a very good position to go on. So the eight heats and the maturity, they are behind us. Obviously, the winners will only progress to the final next week. What about from a box draw point of view? What's the story? Uh, We'll be hosting the box draw on Saturday night after the last, so after the race meeting, after the eight heats are done. We'll uh, we'll give the stewards a reprieve for one race and then we'll get stuck straight into it immediately after the last on the Meadows Dogs Facebook page. So we'll be hosting that. Hopefully, I'm getting a little bit nervous with uh, Kanye All Class finding his way into that box draw. Will there be questions be asked if yours are red? I think that probably would be, but I, I'll be, I will be reiterating uh, that I am just commentating over the top of it. I'm well and truly removed from it. The stewards can, can strut their stuff. They can do their thing and, uh, and I'll be the cheerleader on the sidelines. Eating chicken wings. That's it. Eating chicken, smacking chicken wings. <laughs> Do I make up for a box draw? No, I don't think I will. No. Uh, you can't polish a turd, but uh, mm. I'll work with what I've got, Patch, which is a head for radio. All right, now into the heats of the fireball. There's two of those. And I think from a, a numbers point of view, Smithy, that's a little bit disappointing. But the depth that we've got is very, very good and no better example of that than the opening heat. Palawa King exploded two of the more informed greyhounds in the country. Yeah, well, uh, there's been no secret made of uh, the fact that there's been some cuts to, to feature races. And when we got round to this, we went through line by line. We got round to the fireball. We went through the nominations of years past. And I just said, look at the look at the honour roll. You've got Tornado Tears. You've got Burn One Down. You've got Destiny Fireball, who have all won this race. You need to keep it. We need to make sure we support it. And uh, you build it and they will come. And they, they have come, Patch, because I know there's only 16 nominations, but they're quality. And having Palawa King versus Explorer, Exploded in this race. Exploded, obviously won the Group 1 Queensland Cup recently. So it is chock full of talent. Big Susie's been a Group 1 uh, finalist. Pass Mark's been a Group 1 finalist as well. So there's plenty of talent across this. I'm leaning towards Exploded. Just the way that he was coming out of the boxes in Queensland, maybe, just maybe, like we discussed so with excavation. How does excavation, that compare to what he was doing down here? Uh, I think there's improvement to come. He's obviously had his indiscretions down here in Victoria, but he, he comes into it with a hell of a lot of confidence. He's been awesome up in Queensland. And if he can come out of the boxes, he's going to have that advantage on the superstar that is Palawar King, who's going to be back in the field. And and we know Jack and Marie Smith always have them ready, but they even just seem like they just have that extra cherry on top when it comes to final time. And knowing that you only have to finish top four, maybe just maybe exploded will be the more ready one, the more race fit one. Palawa King, if he looms up on the home turn, there's nothing better in Greyhound That's racing. The best. We, all, we all want Greyhounds to run on. It's better if they're stayers, and particularly him. And when he's been to the Meadows of recent time and won feature races, he's had Willie Pike and Damien Oliver on his back. So not sure if he'll need them this time around because if Explosive's out and running, he's going to be hard to beat from a time point of view. Yeah, of course he is. But uh, we've seen Palawa King just run over the top of good dogs time after time. He's cracked a million-dollar barrier. He's won group ones at the Meadows. He's got a phenomenal record at the Meadows, both over the 600 and the 730. So you can never, ever discount him. And I feel sick that I'm going with Exploded. But I, I just think the dog in form right now and the one that comes up with a really nice draw is Exploded. 
but it would not shock me one iota to see Palawa King coming from the clouds and storming all over the top. I of think them. way too often with my heart over my head. So Palawa King yeah. for me. All right, heat two of the fireball. And this is a very different situation because we spoke about Palawa King, explosive. We now talk about Greyhounds who haven't had a great deal of exposure over 700 metres. We've got Drill Sergeant who has had a lot of 700 metre racing. Here we'll go forward. Then you've got Alice Babe who's been over 700 a few times. Then Aunt Virginia and Stomping. So it's different sort of dynamic, isn't it? Because we know that Greyhounds can be good over 600 metres, stepping up to 700. It's usually a different kettle of fish, isn't it? You don't really know what to expect. This is the sort of race why I love 700 metre racing patch when it's at the top level and you've got greyhounds that are stepping up in distance for the first time. Aunt Virginia stomping who are both absolute flying machines over that middle distance. They've, they've both performed well over the 500, the sprint as well. Can they get the 700 metres? That is the query. Then you look at Drill Sergeant. He's a Group 1 Sale Cup winner and he's, he's as you said, he's had a fair grounding over the 700 metres now. So there's no question mark there. There's still some slight question marks with Alice Babe over over the level of competition that she's faced but the time doesn't lie that she's the clock doesn't lie and the times that she's been running uh, have been superb and and the Ennis camp ha- just did not hesitate in putting her up she's only had 12 career starts but she's already had three of those over the 700 meters they've all been in good times she's a flying machine whether she can cope with the early pressure that's going to happen in this race but that's the question mark on all of them can drill sergeant punch up and hold the lead can aunt virginia hold the lead and, and get out in front and then manage to run out the 700 metres like I think the Paris Kivas camp thinks she can. Ken Stomping run out the 700 metres as well. He's been so brilliant over the 600 metres, but uh, this is one of the more intriguing staying races I've seen in a long period of time. I think Alice Babe has to be your favourite, but I really, really want to go with Aunt Virginia. I feel like I'm just sitting on the fence and getting splinters patched, but uh, I'm maybe, I think before we went on air, I said I'm tipping Alice Babe. I've just talked myself into Aunt Virginia. Come on. Have you really? I have. I think okay. I have. I, I I genuinely cannot split the two. Um, obviously, the three and the seven are going to put some pressure on Aunt Virginia early, but she's been so good over the 600 metres, particularly at the Meadows, and uh, she broke the track record at Sale as well. So I, I think I've talked myself around in this spiel. So that goes to show how close my thoughts are in this one. Yeah, I'll be with Alice Babe. I just think that not only consistency, although it is a small sample size, over 700 metres has been quite good to date. Drill Sergeant's going to go forward and he just keeps punching. So if he won the race, no one's probably going to be tipping him. But if he won the race, you wouldn't be surprised at all, would you? Would not shock me uh, one iota. Even an Osana Bale uh, could come out and win this sort of race. You, you just never know. And I reckon if between now and Saturday night, if, if 10 different people ask me who I liked in this race, I'll probably give 10 different answers. If, including the reserves, you think they can Yeah, I'll, I'll make a case for them. There's no reserves. There is none. <laughs> there is none, but I'll make a case for them anyway. <laughs> All right, two heats, as we mentioned, the top four through from each. So, again, although it is disappointing, odds on the final next week is going to be one of the best staying races of the year. I, I think it will be. I, I think, obviously, there's not that many targets for them at this time of year for the stayers after the Brisbane Cup and particularly here in Victoria, but they've, they've come out in force. They've supported this race and we absolutely love it. And like you said, this is going to be an absolute ripper next week, but there's two ripper races to get through on Saturday night over the 730 as well. Okay, so ripping card this Saturday. Can't wait for it. Now, next week, we've spoken about these two finals. If anyone wants to get along, what sort of offer are you putting on the table? Is it $1 chicken wings for everyone who coughs up for the big coin <laughs> upstairs or, or what's the go? I think I'd get murdered if I uh, if I went for the dollar chicken wings on a group one night. So we've gone a little bit different, a little bit more upmarket, $79 dining package, uh, which includes your beer and wine, which we love, Patch, but you also get a three-course meal, alternate drop that uh, our team of chefs and our hospitality staff, they do a fantastic job, as we know, Patch. We've sampled their food and their service on many occasions and it's it's definitely worth $79. I had to fight to make it that amount. It's worth a hell of a lot more, but we kept it nice and cheap. Hopefully everyone will support it and hopefully everyone will come and enjoy their time next Saturday night at the final. Indeed, it's going to be a ripping night this week and next week in what's a really big period of time for the Meadows. Thanks for joining us on this preview and enjoy what's going to be an epic card on Saturday with hate to the maturity and also hate to the fireball.